Uh, can you see everything? We can see and we can hear you. Okay, great. So, uh, hello everyone. My name is Kasper Zatis and I will present to you our efforts in modeling of a cladding pumped RBM, iterbium co-doped fiber amplifier for use in the optical C-band. First, a few words on our research motivation. Uh, first of all, uh, space division multiplexing has become quite a hot, hot topic for research, namely uh, in the field of multi-core fibers, as that is the next big thing that can increase the uh, transmission capacity uh, by, by having multiple cores within the same fiber. So instead of having one core that transmits one signal, uh, you have four within the same volume. And uh, as such, uh, cladding pumped amplifiers have become quite important because they can uh, facilitate the amplification uh, of all these cores with a single device instead of having to separate uh, these cores into multiple devices and amplify them separately. So this kind of approach can result in quite significant cost savings. And secondly, existing uh, Airbnb doped cladding pumped amplifiers are not very uh, power efficient, but this problem can be mitigated by introducing iterbium ions, which have a much uh, wider uh, absorption absorption band, and uh, these iterbium ions can transfer some of their energy to erbium ions, which can then amplify uh, the signal within the optical C band. So uh, this here is the uh, schematic diagram of the simulation model uh, that we use to test uh, uh, the performance of our erbium iterbium uh, code of fiber amplifier. It primar primarily consists of the doped fiber itself, which is based on experimentally extracted data from a commercially available fiber that we have in our lab setup. Uh, to the fiber is connected a high power pump source and there are two possible configurations. Either the pump source uh, propagates in the same direction as the signal or it propagates in the other direction. So, uh, It happens to be that uh, only one of, one of these is active at a time. Uh, so the signal that we use to test the model is a 10 gigabit uh, signal with a channel spacing of 100 gigahertz. And uh, in the end, in the end uh, we explored multiple cases, but we settled on using 40 channels uh, in total for all, all of our for our simulations. So to give everyone a point of reference, I've included three microscope images of the fibers that we used in uh, our amplifier setup. Uh, on the left is the fiber that's at the output of our laser diode. And in the middle, is the double clad erbium terbium doped fiber. The dark spot in the middle is the core that's doped with erbium uh, and terbium, and this is also where the signal propagates. And uh, this lighter section, uh, this flower shaped section, is uh, the inner cladding through which uh, the high-powered pump light propagates. 
this unusual shape uh, increases the likelihood that the pump light will cross the core and uh, in such a way uh, it will promote the absorption of the pump light essentially improving the efficiency of the whole system and finally on the right is the fiber at the end of the amplifier to separate the signal from the pump light in the cladding. So moving on to uh, some results, uh, we measured the emission and absorption uh, cross sections of our fiber, which is visible in the, on the left. And then uh, inserted these values into our simulation model. What we found was that the exact values uh, of the emission and absorption spectra are not that important uh, as long as the order of magnitude is at least correct because we reduce the value by 30% and decrease the value by 30% and found that the impact on the actual amplifier is that uh, uh, there is only one decibel difference in gain when the gain is close to 30 decibels. Essentially, it's in the grand scheme of things, uh, the exact value of the absorption and uh, emission spectra is not that impactful, at least in our model. So uh, our main goal was uh, to ensure maximally uniform gain. And we found that it was at around seven meter length of the dope fiber. Uh, and what we found was also that at the same length, for the counter propagation case, the gain is one decibel higher than in the co propagation case. But that comes at the cost of one decibel for the no noise figure, which is a terrible trade off. So we settled on using only the co propagation case. And so here are some graphs uh, showing the 40 WDM channels. Uh, that go through our amplifier. Uh, this is using the seven meters of the fiber at a channel power of uh, minus 20 dBm at a pump power of uh, three watts. And we found that uh, using this configuration, we can achieve uh, a gain of at least 19 decibels at a noise figure of around uh, four decibels which is uh, somewhat better than a uh, uh, cladding pumped amplifier that's doped with just RBM. So our hope is that uh, this kind of approach can be uh, quite successful and uh, hopefully it can be applied to uh, multi-core fibers as well, as we currently only have done simulations on single core fibers to establish a baseline. Okay, uh, that will be all from me. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Yeah, some questions, please. Uh... <laughs> Uh, what is NRZ minus OOK? Uh, that's the modulation format. Uh, it's basically uh, there is a there is a power when the bit is one, and there is no power when the bit is zero. Essentially, the simplest modulation format that uh, was available. Thank you.